what took you so long to click on this video? This video is about how to criticize. Criticizing clearly is an art form and it needs to be practiced. But criticizing is basically ever present in academia because at every step of everything that we do, we are being exposed to evaluation and judgment. That is criticism. It literally comes up in everything uh, from grading as essays to giving a talk to getting critiques on manuscripts to getting comments back on grant proposals that you wrote and it can be more formal in evaluations of faculty and staff. But it also has many other forms like critiquing people's ideas or critiquing people's talks at a conference and so on and so forth. The, the list is virtually endless. And so here are a couple of things to consider when criticizing. The first thing is criticize the matter at hand and not the person. So direct your comment to the subject matter you're talking about right now, whatever the case may be in a debate, in a discussion or in a paper critique, not at the person. So for example, we once got a reviewer comment back that said like, well, isn't this first author a little bit too young and unexperienced to write a meta-analysis. Don't write that. Right? You can criticize different parts of that meta-analysis for having not been carried out well. Then you criticize the meta-analysis or the technique that was applied in the paper, but you don't direct it at the person. That's just unprofessional and uncalled for. Now, use the right tone is also important. It makes a complete difference the way you say things. <laughs> And also the way you write things, of course. Your criticism should be presented in a professional way. It should be not emotional, not aggressive, but compassionate. And what should be clear is that your intention is to make things better. So, for example, when you write a um, reviewer report on a paper, say like, don't say, you must do this, or the authors must do that, right? That is way too aggressive when it's a tone that's um, uncalled for because you're giving your opinion. And so you could say, I think it would improve the readability of the paper if the authors did this. Or I think this would be easier to understand if the figure were designed in such a such a way, right? Then you have basically given it the tone of a suggestion rather than an order. <laughs> or don't say, this is incomprehensible. Say, I couldn't quite follow this argument here. Maybe the authors could think about how they could present this in a, in a clearer way. Right? See the difference in tone? I mean, you mean the same, but it is a completely different way of delivery. One of the most important things about um, criticism is, of course, to be constructive. So what is constructive criticism? Constructive criticism is aimed at improving what you consider to be unclear or suboptimal. And it has basically two elements. It's justified, so it doesn't just give some gut feeling about something, but it lays things out, it lays out an argument. And it also thereby points out how you can specifically improve. Those are key elements of um, having a constructive criticism. And by pointing out <laughs> how something can improve, you basically demonstrate your goodwill. It's not destructive. You point out how things can be better and you show that level of compassion that you want things to improve. Give you an example. So, for example, if a reviewer comment says, like, cut the discussion section by 20%, that cannot be firmly categorized under constructive because why should it be cut by 20%? Maybe it's because there are too many words in the discussion section and this kind of conflicts with the word limit of this paper type and this journal. Well, then you can say that, right? So, say, like, it seems like the discussion is 20% too long. In order to abide by the regulations of this manuscript, please um, cut it so that it fits this word limit. Or you could say, well, this particular part of the discussion seems to be maybe taking things too far, so please consider maybe removing this part. That would be the more constructive version of essentially the same criticism. 
also just one way to deliver uh, constructive criticism and to signal your goodwill, if this is either in writing or if it's uh, when you talk about something, is to first say something nice. Like to say, this was a well-delivered talk, or this was a very nicely presented uh, presentation, or this paper is overall very well written and on a super important and interesting topic. And then you start with your criticism. It's a small difference, but it makes it nicer for everybody and it basically signals your goodwill and that what you're after is really to be constructive. Consider the setting of the criticism. This is also an important aspect. So if you say the very same thing to somebody in front of an entire lab group, it will have a completely different effect than if you tell somebody something in private. Um, like one example is um, if they have some, some habits while speaking. You know, if you say that in front of the entire group, you embarrass the person. But if you say it afterwards, then you know, it's basically meant for them to improve. Like some people told me many years ago I had too many ass when I talk. <laughs> but they told me that separately, apart from the plenum, basically. And so I, I took it as a constructive way of criticizing the way I speak and therefore I could cut it out or at least make an effort to cut it out. But if this had been said in front of the entire group, it would have made me feel awful. So of course the setting is extremely important. Consider who is doing the criticizing and what the relationship between the two partners are. So that it has a completely different meaning if you criticize somebody and you are a friend with them or a colleague than if you are like say the leader of the lab or the PI. And so therefore, if you are the PI, you need to be a lot more careful about the way you criticize people. And this is something that I've learned also over the years that, you know, when I say something, it has a completely different effect than when a lab mate says something. So this is very important to factor into the whole equation of criticizing. Or like when you are a more senior colleague at a conference and you say something that may have a completely different effect because of the authority that surrounds you from when um, another fellow PhD student, for example, says something. So it's just important to consider. Now, another important consideration is by which medium does the criticism take place? Is it in talking or is it, for example, in writing an email? Now, very many times it's easier, for example, for me to write an email or to write a chat message where I order my thoughts and I deliver this message like in a, in a logical way and it's friendly and I can change the words a few times to make it better and more palatable and when it is a criticism. At the same time, when you email, then you may also lose some of the nuance, like you, some things that you put in, like maybe as a joke, they may not they may not be transmitted as a joke to the other person. So it's, it's important when you put the things down in writing um, that you pay attention to these kinds of things, how they could be perceived. And um, it's very good, I think, maybe if you use a combination of these two. So if you have a criticism um, of something, then um, you can write that out and you can very carefully think about the wording that you use and revise it a few times. I do that all the time. But then also make sure that you talk to somebody afterwards and uh, make sure it was received the right way. So, but the medium in which you um, transmit the criticism can also be very important. Right, so overall, I think just by looking at the list of points that I, that I gave you here to consider, uh, I think it's obvious that criticism is a, is a pretty difficult thing to do and it's difficult to do well, just because there are so many things to consider. But maybe for simplicity, just keep the following in mind, the following question in the back of your mind is like, how would you feel if you were at the receiving end of this? By whom it was said, how it was said, the way it was delivered and all the other points that we have discussed, how would you feel? And so I think that can be <laughs> a very good shorthand to all the things that I have discussed in, in greater detail. And so as the saying goes, Plenty of people are smart. Distinguish yourself by being nice. If you have other points that people should consider when criticizing, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And with that, happy criticizing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.